Kevin Durant returns just in the nick of time, we may think, as we lay out the path ahead for the Brooklyn Nets, update the circumstances around Ben Simmons' debut for the Nets, and also discuss how this new-look rotation can fare over the final 19 games, all coming up right after the theme music. You are Locked On Nets. Your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Nets podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day over there. It's what they call a podcast heartthrob. Doug Norrie, owner-operator DFSR, for all your daily fantasy sports rankings, DraftKings, FanDuel, he's got you covered. I'm Adam Arbeck, breaking down OGP1 Giant podcast in the New York Football Giants. And this is Doug a jubilant day for Brooklyn Nets fans as off of back-to-back home-and-home losses to the Toronto Raptors and ahead of the Miami Heat game, Kevin Durant is coming back for Brooklyn. All right, great news. Finally, something to, like good to report on after you know we said in the beginning, ramp up. This is all about it's all been the season of ramp up. We're you know seventy game, no, whatever sixty something games in this thing. It's all been ramp a ramp up. up. <laughs> no, it's good. He's finally off the injury report. We kind of saw this coming. There have been little dribs and drabs of news that was making it look like he was getting close to returning. Nets obviously obf- ob- obfuscate around uh, injury news more than any other team in the league, it would seem. So you never really truly seem to know what's happening. But well, he is, by all intents and purposes, going to play. Not sure how many minutes he's going to play against Miami as he continues to probably ramp up. I, I very much doubt it's a full workload, but it can't. They couldn't have happened sooner. They absolutely need Kevin to ramp back uh, for this final push. And this is the first piece and the most important piece for the team to get back among all the guys that haven't been able to play. 19 games to go in the season. So obviously, you know, coming off of, again, back-to-back losses, you snuck in a good one against the Bucks here. There's a couple of different questions around. <laughs> I'm not going to frame this the poor way of, what could Kevin Durant's impact be? But you just mentioned about a minutes restriction. Do you think it'll look different for him than it did for Kyrie Irving? Because we talked about when he came back, it was just like, oh, I guess this dude's just always ready to play. But from a, a body type standpoint, you think that Durant will need that pitch count for a game or two? I think you tread a little more carefully with him. Uh, Discretion being like the better part of Valor, I think, even though it would be very nice to win this game against the Heat. But uh, the, I think in general, I'd be shocked. I mean, remember too, earlier in the season, he was playing among the most minutes in the entire league. We had multiple podcasts. Uh, This feels like an absolute eternity ago, but we had multiple podcasts about saying, You know, if they don't start to dial this back on Durant, what's going to happen come playoff time? I I can't even I'd love to go back and talk to that version of myself and explain what and say, hey, pal, that's actually going to be the least of your worries. Oh, (laughs) guy, 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 guy. Oh, you you're so know. cute. Oh, you're 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 precious. Oh, you think the precious. minutes are going to be a problem? Go, you're come March. Oh, do I have something? Oh, I got another thing to tell you. This is going to be a much different situation. No, but like oh. I think that I think we're in a situation where I, I'd be shocked if he's not going to go out and play like 36 minutes. I don't think in a close game, um, because I think they have to be a little bit wary of where they are. Um, and just his, you know, just general injury history. I mean, remember this guy's only you know, two years off of an Achilles. He's had oh. other stuff go on, so it's not like. And he's not exactly a spring chicken. So I'd be shocked if we saw a full minutes workload from him. Although he strikes me as the kind of guy that probably would want to. <laughs> and oh, yeah. so we'll see. Um, but, I, in, but just in general, it's just good to have him back in the mix because they, again, I can't understand this. They need him now. Like they need him. They need him yesterday. Like they, they have, they've really, really struggled without him. We'll go through some of the stats, but it's been basically all downhill since he got hurt. And that's why he was an MVP candidate ish when he was playing and he's not anymore because he's missed too much time. But like, I just, it just can't be understated. He's one of the, when he's the, when he's as good as it gets, he's one of the top three best players in basketball, if not the best. So yeah, they just need him back. It's good to have him back. And the big difference being too, because we talked about, right? Like Durant coming back when you construct a roster around superstars and we know they've gone through a change, a different iteration of, of what these superstars look like, but That's, I think, why the impact was as devastating as it turned out to be for Brooklyn. Not that any team isn't going to miss a Kyrie or a Kevin Durant or any of your top flight players, the Giannis's of the world, the LeBron's of the world. But 
when you're that, you, you said this going back weeks, when you're that top heavy with your superstar talent, all the supporting cast, it's an incredibly hard lift to say, now go out there and win some games. We're going to get into yep. now with some of the new role players around Kevin Durant out there and what they can hope to do. But you said, you know, the fact that there's still two games up in the standings on the Charlotte Hornets, that's a bit of a safety net, just saying concerns around making or missing the playoffs, obviously. But the idea of just switching the flip and getting back into this role <laughs> here is not going to be the easiest task for them. Switching the flip. We're just going to keep saying it every podcast because if you listen to the podcast for the first time, this is a, Adam's new saying is you don't flip, you don't flip the switch. You, you switch, you switch, what do you say? You switch the flip. Switch the flip. Um, uh, and by the way, we're recording this uh, just to, for uh, accounting purposes here. We are recording this before the Charlotte Cleveland game at, on uh, Wednesday. So that um, the number that you said could look different um, just based on whatever happens yeah. uh, in that one. Yeah, but look, the numbers on a high level, the numbers around Durant leaving or le exiting and not being able to play and then being able to play um, and coming back. It's like it just couldn't be more obvious when they're very simple things. They're 24 and 12 this season when he played. They're 8 and 19 when he doesn't. Not right. So. Like, like, <laughs> and that, I mean, a big part of that was the whatever 11 or 12 game losing streak that they had uh, not too long ago, where it was looking like things were completely in a free fall, but that's really what happens. And that was around a time of turmoil around the team. And there was a bunch of other stuff going on, obviously with Harden hadn't yet exited and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in terms of, so just like their, their standard record, they, the, the wins and losses just kind of speak for themselves. And then just other things around just what he brings just that on and off court stuff. If you isolate Kevin Durant this season for like him being on, and then you isolate for James uh, Harden and Irving being off, right? Because you're like, okay, well, do Durant's minutes look better because he's surrounded by some of these other guys. Sure. Like they crush all these minutes too. a uh, 114.87 offensive rating. This is for, per PVP stats, Uh 106 defensive rating, net rating 8.51. So that's like, those are the, and I, I took those two guys out because it's like, those are the minutes that he was just bought with, you know, it's like him, Kessler Edwards, Patty Mills, right. Blake, whoever, like whatever, like that's all the role players. So it's basically just him. And then, like not much money on the books worth of players. And so, and they just completely crush those minutes. This is why it's so important. The most, one of the most important players you can get back in basketball. And so this is, again, I just, I'm a broken record here, but it really just can't be understated how important it is to get him back. And do you think that, I mean, 19 games, we had talked about this. I had eyeballed the 15th against the Orlando Magic as being a return date for him. The fact that you get him back, I mean, even beyond the wins and losses, or let's say the wins that he can bring for your team, the 19 games, I think, is significant, too, because you and I had discussed that idea of, listen, as long as everyone's back and healthy by the playoffs, that's the ultimate goal. And I and I think that that's fair to say. And also having 19 games now for Kevin to, Durant to get back into peak form, to be back ramped up to playing 40 plus minutes, if that's what's required of him, you prefer to be doing that with 19 games as opposed to five, as opposed to seven. And, and then again, hopefully, as we're going to discuss here on the back end, the continuity piece with any of these new players we're going to discuss next about adding in Seth Curry, adding in Drummond, looking at a rejuvenated Bruce Brown. Like how can all these guys benefit off of him? And then just to tie a bow on that sentiment around what he brings on the court. Remember we we'll probably won't get to some of these players, but the trickle down effect of walking him out onto the court and guys that you have to ask significantly less of is just as important for this team too, because we just came off of a game where we thought down the stretch, the Nets had a chance to win it. You come up just a little bit short and it's, usually because you're asking guys that you prefer to be playing 15 to 20 to be playing 30 to 35, getting everyone back into those roles is important. And then the remaining players on the court and how they benefit off of Durant is going to be huge. I, like you say, I don't think <laughs> breaking news, Kevin Durant's really good at basketball and it's awesome to have him back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I have a couple of thoughts here just about um, this. Uh, j well, we have a lot of other thoughts. We have other stuff about you know, Ben Simmons, um, other things. And we'll talk a little bit about the rotation, uh, what that is going to look like and how it's just different from the last time Durant played because yep. we can just look at sort of one-to-one -one how different this team is now than it was uh, back when he got hurt against the Pelicans. Uh, for And then I want to talk real quick about the schedule too, about like this oh, upcoming yeah. schedule over the next couple of games. First, got to talk to you about our friends over at Bet Online Basketball in full steam right here between pros and, you know, Kyle. College Hoops is really starting to dial it up around this year as we head into March. You got to head over to Bet Online for all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, where the next coach might be fired or the, where the next coach is going to land, maybe. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. Bet Online, 
remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Basically a one-stop shop for everything you need when it comes to betting. It's not just basketball either. They've got hockey, boxing, UFC, uh, everything, and baseball. If those guys can ever figure it out and come back, that'll be on there too. Uh, no, That could be a little longer than you think. They'll head on over to Bet Online right now. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. And, of course, you make us your first listen of the day. Make that second listen, the Locked On Now podcast. It's a nightly recap of every single NBA game from all those local experts, and it's, quite frankly, unique to the Locked On Podcast Network. Heck of a coverage to give you that wide-ranging scope of what's going on around the NBA. As you say, uh, let's talk about, first, the rotations here and what it means to have Kevin Durant now joining a new-looking roster as opposed to where he left after that Pelicans game. Seth Curry, Andre Drummond being the two key pieces among them, but then you also add in Goran Dragic. I I think let's stay in that guard area. Let's stay in the guard room, right? You've brought in another ball handler and facilitator, and then you've replaced Joe Harris's sharp shooting from the outside, something that Kevin Durant didn't have all season long, effectively 14 games in, which we know is a big benefit to their offense. How do those two players stand to benefit and, and also help Kevin Durant? Uh, I'm going to get that one second, and this is a very small note about the rotations just because we're talking about the guards. It's not uh, relevant for this game against Miami, but it is relevant to say that four of the next six games are on the road. So those these will be Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant games. Uh, just yeah. and, and, that, and that was the only point I was going to make about like why this stretch is actually – this actually times out pretty well too for like him to come back and not have to shoulder maybe as big of a load. He'll have to probably do it against Miami, but then – five of those next or excuse me four of those next five games after they're gonna you know hopefully be paired together so um just a note about that in terms of how he works how it works in with everyone else look the reason that we get excited about kevin durant is because he's one of those few players in the league that is personnel independent he does not matter who he plays with it all works like everyone is lifted by him being able to play. He can play with any archetype of player. He can, um, it just doesn't matter. That's how he plays. There's this small group of superstars that are like this in the league that just don't need anybody else. Looks like they will need everything. They need other people around them. They, it does not matter as much as it matters. Like, like Embiid needs another facilitator. Like yeah. around him bad you know like he's they can get by without it but it's okay Jokic really needs spacing around him he's amazing but it gets even better Durant is already there and so anything you add around them is kind of gravy and now it's just you know now you just decide how good it can get so how it works in with the other guards we've already seen Seth Curry can catch and shoot uh, and does not need the ball to facilitate, but can if need be. That's a great thing for him. We don't, we know what Dragic can do about getting to the basket. That really helps in terms of keeping defenses honest is on the interior. I actually think the Drummond pairing will work pretty well because Durant like doesn't matter as much if the paint gets crowded for him mm-hmm. <laughs> because he can just stop, he can operate so much in the mid range that you can just stick a guy like Drummond either on pick and roll DHO stuff or just stick him down in the dunker spot and see what happens. I think it's just as as it has been for every stop of Kevin Durant's career, no matter who the other four players are on the court, it is just going to look so significantly better. And if we're going back and looking at when uh, he was last playing, yes, Harden was here. They were also starting Kessler Edwards and Daron Sharp. That last game that he got hurt, those two guys were in the starting lineup. And no matter – now it's a downgrade from Harden for sure – but it's an upgrade sort of on who they're starting in these other spots. So it doesn't even out. Harden does not even out. He's too good. But it's still – it's not like he's walking back into this hardened list team and it's, you know, it's him, Patty Mills, Kessler, Edwards, and Darren Sharp, Darren Sharp and see how you go. Like this, the, these pieces have been greatly improved. No, and I think that that was going to be the other key point. Right? You say he is team-proof, player-proof. doesn't matter who else is on the court with him as far as his game. Oh. But – I think that there's a vast improvement sans Harden around now. He's now surrounded with more veteran players, more experienced players. And to whatever value, and this is, I think, just from on a game-to-game basis, on a possession-to-possession basis, we, we saw this. He could elevate the play of everyone around him, obviously, take rookies along with him, and they could have some big games. But the idea of, of not having the lows, of not having the miscommunications, of not having some of these stretches where Kessler Edwards was playing but wasn't quite looking to take perimeter shots yet, or Dayron Sharp was playing but hadn't quite figured out the pick and roll and getting down to the basket, et cetera. Now with Drummond and with Dragic and with Seth Curry, these guys know where to be. 
They, un- they, they know where to be in an NBA game, regardless of the system or scheme that you're running. And specifically, they know how to play off of a superstar talent. So I do think, I would like to think, that you'll actually see a pretty smooth transition, him coming in and getting the feel for everybody because all these guys already have a high level of experience. The one thing off of it that I wondered uh, as far as impacting some of these guys, can Seth Curry, I mean, Seth Curry's been phenomenal for the Nets since coming over. Oh, can yeah. his game benefit even more? I mean, how, I shouldn't say could it, how will his game benefit even more with Kevin Durant? And does it potentially help that he is a better on-ball creator than Patty Mills But in the same way that you ask too much of Patty Mills and eventually you hit a wall, I don't think that Curry's going to get fatigued. But I think there is this cumulative effect of saying, we don't want you always to be looking for your shot. It's like the the slap out, rebound, triple that he knocks down. But then when he gets the baseline jumper, it doesn't go. Is that because you're doing so much all the way through the game as opposed to paying a little bit freer when you have Kevin Durant out there? You know, it's funny. One of the most overused terms right now going around just um, just sort of NBA analysis. And it's funny because it's mostly used correctly, but they just used a lot or a lot. I've seen it a lot more now uh, than I ever have before is the, is the ideas around gravity and what certain players command in terms of defensive attention toward them that then allow other people on their team to operate in more space. And it's become a lot big th- bigger thing around like mostly superstars because superstars even if they're not facilitators tend to elevate players around them because of the gravity that is introduced when they are on the court. And so this is a long way to say Seth Curry will benefit because the attention that it needs to be paid um, Durant will actually be similar to what he saw, not in the same way or not the same personnel, but similar to what he was happening for him in Philadelphia with Joel Embiid. Again, not the same exact, but the, the amount of gravity that you need that Joel Embiid um, commands from those needing to defend him is in a lot of similar ways what will happen with Durant. So the first thing that happens with a guy like Curry is the shots just get easier. And he's already been able to hit kind of high difficult, high degree of difficulty shots already with the Nets, which is great. So it only, it only just gets easier on a cascading effect. So I think, and he, you know, having watched him a decent amount, but not nearly as closely as I have like with the with the Nets this season, he just is so much better on the ball than I guess I kind of realized or that Philly really used him, right? Like they just didn't – they did at times, but nothing like he's been doing with the Nets. Not that I saw. I mean, feel free to tell me if I'm wrong. It was much more Tyrese Maxey kind of like running the show when that was the, the squad this year. And that is just so encouraging around what he can bring because he can still – even if the catch and shoot stuff's not there, like his ability to have defenses overcommit and then he works his way yeah. off of an overcommit, like on a closeout or something like that into the mid range. And you feel very confident in him doing that in a way that you don't really feel about the other guys. And again, everyone's just going to kind of fit, but I, the Curry thing is really, I mean, thank goodness they got him back. Like yeah. in that trade, it's, it's really was, I, I mean, good for them standing their ground and saying like, we need to get like these other guys. And like, he's been, because he's going to be really, really important. And it's going to see, you're going to see like the shots are just going to be easier for him now. And I, you mentioned that too, because it's like, you know, it's not a one to one, but comparing the idea of like seeing Bruce Brown in the lane trying to get a push shot to go versus Seth Curry being in the lane and pulling up on a mid range, right? Same thing for Goran Dragic. And I think the extra piece off of that would be to say uh, Dragic and, and Dragic and Curry and also Andre Drummond. These are all guys th- that in, at their respective positions are also good good to great passers, right? So I, I think the fringe benefit, the extra benefit, I should say, is that now not only do these guys work into space, but one of the things that I think we've struggled with watching the Brooklyn Nets, and sometimes because they haven't all been out there together with the superstars, is having two defenders go and rush Kevin Durant, force the ball out of his hands on a double team, and the guy in behind him can't make that shot. Now, when you talk about Seth Curry and Dragic and even Patty Mills, when he gets himself right now, if he passes out of that, it's like the double down of secondary pass, third pass off of that and working it back to Kevin Durant so he can get a wide open look like I think you'll see better ball movement on a possession to possession basis as opposed to prior to prior to the trade, something that the Nets were not going to be able to manufacture because, again, Bruce Brown, not a high-level passer. You didn't have any but any other big. I think Aldrich is a good, not great passer and certainly doesn't work in the same function that Drummond does in and around the basket. Blake Griffin is nice, but you've elevated 
you've elevated that aspect of this team. And I think that's maybe an underrated part of having superstars and what you want the supporting cast to do. You want them to be able to space the floor and knock down open looks. Adding this piece to it should make them more dangerous and more consistent as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like you know, the spacing, like even guys like I would say, like even guys like James Johnson will just be able to exist so much better in this kind of ecosystem. Cause like, so let's say you play a, a lineup of Durant, um, Curry Mills. I'm making this up. Like it's like Mills, Curry, Durant, James Johnson, Andre Drummond, even right. Like, so those minutes were drum were Drummond or, you know, another non-floor spacing big is with James Johnson. It looks terrible. You get like the James Johnson, you know, trying to get to the basket and he's dribbling too much. And like, just kind of outside of his wheelhouse, that stuff all d- doesn't need, no longer needs to happen. Like it's not going to J- James Johnson late in the shot clock anymore. But now you can have him on there because his physicality is actually important sometimes for schematically what they want to do, right? Like switching one through four and stuff like that. So like I I think even those minutes will look better. All right, I know we're we'll, we gonna get into the Ben Simmons thing. We're gonna talk about this. Dur- I could go, I could gush around Durant not having played forever. I realize <laughs> I could just do 90 minutes on Durant not having played. Just kind of shoot a jumper and I'll be like, oh my god, look well, at that. Just kind of a testament to how the season's gone. Okay, let's uh, first go to talk to you about our friends over at Rock Auto. Save time. Save money when you're using, you are using uh, Rock Auto. So many makes and models of car out there. It's just impossible. You try to go over to the local chain uh, store if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, they disappear into like what I call the cavern, emerge with a box, kind of grunt at you. You you think it's the right part. You can't totally be sure until you pop the hood and then you're still maybe not sure. None of that is anything you need to worry about when you're over at Rock Auto. Spend you can spend 30 or even 50% less than the same for the same parts than at your chain store. Don't even get me started with a car dealership where they're absolutely going to soak you. They have everything you need, tail lamps, brake parts, motor oil, new carpets, windshield wipers, everything you could really ever think of if you need to do that work on your car yourself. You go to rockauto.com. You see all the parts available for your car or truck. You write in locked on and how did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts, your car, will ever need rockauto.com. So, of course, then, um, you said it. If if we're elated about the return of Kevin Durant and what it means for this team, the news on the Ben Simmons front has not been nearly as optimistic. There was the idea about the on-court on and off-court, mental, the mental health aspect of it that he was dealing with, getting back into basketball shape. Then there's the back flare-up that's come up now. And timeline to return, TBD. And it's... Wait well further than closer, I would say at this point. Yeah, so there was a, a bunch of different news that came out today. Brian Windhorst uh, went on ESPN. I believe it might have been an Australian show. Um, I take that back. I think it was an Australian uh, broadcast that he went on discussing the Ben Simmons thing. Rowan Shelburne got out and said that he had had a little setback with the back. Um, and then there was Woj came. Those are basically just like everyone just did their media rounds around Simmons. And then Woj came out uh, and mentioned that around the Philly March 10th thing wasn't going to happen. I think we kind of knew that one already. Like I, I'd speculated last week uh, about when we would see the three together. I was adamant that it would not happen before the Philly game. I thought there would be no scenario where they would put him back into like that, you know, pit <laughs> where it could really, really go sideways. But the part where like um, his agent, Rich Paul came out and said, it's like, it's not days, it's weeks. Like that was actually the most concerning part where it's, that because you know if you're thinking okay let's get past the philly the philly thing we all kind of understand that march 10th is not going to be the best place for you to make your debut maybe even not the madison square garden maybe like at orlando looks pretty good right nice kind of soft landing zone it's orlando you know i don't know i don't think the crowd's going to get all that raucous there but now this latest report, I mean, that still would be two weeks. So that would technically fulfill the weeks if we're getting super my on the minutia around <laughs> plurals and like what the thing. By the way, I mean, this is what am I wrong? Like, this is what you have to do with the Nets and, and the and the injury reporting, right? Like you have to like you're like just Charlie looking at the, the, the board, the conspiracy theory board. It's freaking ridiculous. Like you want to get you want to get in here, Mac. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of yeah, like well, who does it benefit? Like, who does it benefit? I, I guess that's my question. It's like I get. You know, you're not want to violate HIPAA laws by telling everyone like what everyone's thing is or whatever it is. Okay, whatever. Like, no one's going to hold you to it. But the part where you just don't know at all, like there's no there's no clue and like that's. But and this is not the first thing with the Nets. It's been seasons of this. Like, 
this and is where you they rather, operate than, and again, they just don't rather care. say we don't know like you know we, we, we don't know yeah, we'll give you an update when we can avoid avoid the answer altogether as opposed to it's almost like the nets take a little bit of pleasure in being like here's a bit of a timeline we're thinking about now check back in with me in a week and that may change by 10 days check back with me in a month that may change by two years like we and we seem to enjoy giving you speculative timelines around it and i i get that the media is always going to kind of push you for it but th this is another to your point this is numerous examples where <laughs> joe harris the entire Entire season none of these things ever seem to meet whatever expectation the net set for early on they never they never do it never it's never well it's never early i'll tell you that it's like <laughs> it's never it's, they never come back early like that you can guarantee a hundred percent on that go ahead and then i have now, another thought on yeah now the, the, now the one thing i will say to the return of ben simmons just in, in the big picture scheme of it this this again goes back to uh sean mark's comments at the town hall meeting with season ticket holders where where he he remarked it made philadelphia better right now and we think the trade made us better now and also in the future this is the piece where i think whatever it was going to take from a ramp up standpoint from a mental health standpoint all those things i think the nets believe that they're going to have ben simmons this year and he's going to be a, a, a component of what they try to accomplish in the playoffs and also they understood that it was going to be a whatever it looks like it looks like scenario and that's why you didn't see any pressure or push for him to get out there and why i don't think you're seeing a lot of you know, disappointment or expression of, yeah, we were hoping for this is all. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see when it gets there. And I think they had that understanding going into it. Oh, yeah. I think so too. And like, like I said, the, because they use the word weeks and technically the, that Orlando game is technically weeks away. Right. I still think you can dream a little bit on the timeline. Um, but then there was another you know little caveat that was thrown in, maybe not this month. And now if you're, if you, you know, if you're going to take that to, be the, the truth then now you're looking at five games left in the regular season when he can't comes back because if you're looking you know if you're looking a month away from now april 2nd would be they play atlanta april 2nd and that's atlanta houston knicks Cavs, pacers and the season's over yep. and so again i i'm, I'm kind of done speculating on this i think I, i'm only just going to caveat it by saying this is what they've said this is what it could mean I, i'm done trying to guess it because i i think long ago you just heard my me being frustrated about it because I, it's been a season or multiple seasons now of trying to guess what the timelines mean. Here's the little thing. They don't mean anything like they, they never, they've never meant anything. You can't trust it. You trust it when they're back. You trust it. Like we do with Kevin Durant. He's off the injury report. He's coming back. Yep. Hallelujah. That's the truth. Yep. I, I think, I think we, I, I need you to hold me accountable, buddy. No more, no more guessing after this. I just did my last guess around the someone's coming, coming back. That's going to be it for me. Wow, you just switched the flip on that one. Listen, 19 games to play. Ben Simmons' situation being what it is. All the information we have, no more guesswork around Simmons, around what's going to happen with Kyrie. Kevin Durant is back, 19 games to go. When you sit here and you look at the standings right now, what what can you reasonably expect the Nets to accomplish over 19 games? They're three games back now of the Raptors in the seventh seed. And they're four and a half games back from the Celtics in the sixth seed. If you're talking about avoiding play in games, that's the only real, that's the only real goal that you're looking to accomplish here beyond maybe being out of the 10th seed. But can they accomplish that over 19 games? Or is this again, just getting people back on the court, getting healthy and feeling confident with what you're going to put on the court. I think you have to make peace with the playing game at this point. I, yeah. um, I don't think there's really many ways around it. I mean, Jalen Brown got hurt for the Celtics. That doesn't look like he's going to miss a ton of time. Who knows the Van Vliet situation with the Raptors. That actually doesn't really matter too much with the Raptors because they still, that's still playing. It's just the seven verse eight. Uh, they, the Cavs just got Darius Garland back. So you can't like expect them to take any huge hit. Um, I think the Nets fans, no, even with Durant, I mean, I'm only feeling confident about like the nine spot because of Durant coming back. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for Durant coming back, I would not feel even confident about that. I don't think, but well, um, unfortunately having Boston and Toronto be ahead of you in the standings and you have one more game against Boston, that'll be it. Like you don't even have the games against those teams where you could make eat up ground at a quicker pace where you'd say it's not about going 19 and zero, but you can beat those teams head to head and accomplish it. Nope. You're on the back end of those as well. So all you can do is get the wins where you can now. Yeah, for sure. So I think that I think we need to make peace, you know, and hope that it's the ninth seed. I don't think I, I don't think I can uh, and, and be pleasantly surprised if it's anything else. All right, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow uh, following the Miami game, uh, doing a little or doing a, not a little bit, a big recap of whatever happens with Durant's first game back. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe over 
on the Locks on Nets YouTube channel and wherever you get podcasts as well. Really doing some great podcast numbers over the course of this last month. It's been really, really nice. Uh, much appreciated. So go and subscribe to those two things uh, and really appreciate it. Both optimist and pessimist contribute to society. The optimist invents the airplane. The pessimist, the parachute. George Bernard Shaw. Ooh, one of the all-time great poets. We'll be back again tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball.